Really good. Then we get started. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon. Really nice that uh, that many of you could join today to this first of six webinars of the the fabulous uh, academy. Uh, my name is Renske Martijnse. I work for Forum Verium Helsinki, which is the, um, the innovation company of the city of Helsinki, and I'm also the coordinator of the fabulous projects uh, of which this this webinar is uh, is part. Um, I have a very short introduction. Um, you can find more information on, on Fabulous via the website, via fabulous.eu, I think maybe for now it's maybe enough to say that our, our project revolves around uh, shared autonomous mobility and uh, to be precise, uh, this kind of robot buses for, um, for public transport. Uh, these are of course electric vehicles and um, in Fabulous we have six cities and, and other uh, ministry and a public transport operator who are our, the procuring uh, partners and we have a group of 14 uh, followers who are also procuring entities and they increasingly have to deal with all kinds of mobility innovations um, and of course it, it's often the case that, that the employees of for example of cities they don't have um, maybe all the knowledge that they would need about uh, about these kind of innovations and it's not always necessary to know all the details but if you have a pilot in your city or if you're a part of a procurement it's of course really uh, useful and important to know uh, the fundamentals at least so for example um, to know about um, what are what are sensors and, and how does the positioning work or uh, the wireless communication, uh, legal aspects, um, cyber threats, for example, and also charging aspects, for example. So that's why the Fabulous Academy was put up to kind of bridge this, this knowledge gap. Um, and this is the first, first webinar. And of course, it's an open webinar. It's open to everyone. So also if you're not a, uh, in a procuring organization like a city or, or a ministry, you're really uh, welcome to join anyway. Uh, but let me introduce our speaker uh, the, uh, of today, uh, Vesa Linja Aho. He is uh, working at Helsinki Metropolia uh, University of Applied Sciences as a, as a lecturer. Uh, he'll be speaking out the, about the properties of electric vehicles, that's his, his uh, expertise. Uh, he has a lot of experience with that and uh, he spends uh, all of his time teaching on, on those topics. So um, before I give him the floor, very shortly, there's afterwards a possibility for questions. Um, so Vesa now has about 45 minutes for his story and then we have more or less 10 minutes for, for Q&As. You can ask questions through the chat box of your uh, GoToMeeting, or um, you can, well, then unmute yourself and just ask your question. I ask you to stay muted, uh, that you mute yourself during the, the whole webinar, and then afterwards, uh, if you have a question, you can, you can ask that. So I give you the floor. Thank you. Um, and then, yeah, hopefully you'll all have a good webinar. Bye. Yes, thank you and welcome. And uh, if you are not hearing me, uh, you can uh, say it in the in the chat box now. So <clears throat> I'm here to tell about you electric vehicle technology, the basics. Uh, I'm trying to keep this uh, as much uh, non, uh, very deeply technical uh, as it's possible because uh, the technical details, I, uh, if I understood correctly, that the technical details are very deep. Uh, well, we have 45 minutes, so we cannot not go really deep, but uh, the idea of the presentation is to give a, a full scope of uh, the pros and cons of uh, electric vehicle technology so why are uh, why this is such a hot topic and why are politicians pushing the EV technology forward and well as I was introduced I'm uh, Vesali Niaho and uh, I uh, work as senior lecturer in automotive electronics in Helsinki Metropolia. So let's begin uh, <coughs> with electric uh, vehicles, electric cars and the same things uh, uh, mostly which uh, apply for the electric passenger cars are also uh, important and uh, they can be applied to heavy uh, transit also. Well, the electric passenger cars are uh, maybe much more hot topic than the electric uh, buses or uh, other heavy vehicles, uh, but uh, for the passenger cars uh, we have been 
developing in recent years, like uh, previous 10 years, uh, uh, the technology has been advanced so much that the electric cars uh, are now feasible for uh, many consumers. Well, when we talk about uh, electric cars, uh, we usually refer to battery electric vehicles. Uh, we also have uh, hybrid electric vehicles uh, or plug-in hybrid electric vehicles with both uh, the gasoline engine and or diesel engine and uh, the electric motor. But usually when we talk about electric vehicles, we mean those uh, battery electric vehicles. And as you know, the regular passenger cars or buses, uh, they have a, uh, an internal combustion engine, uh, abbreviated by EIC. So uh, this can be replaced with an electric motor and the battery which powers the motor. And uh, this has certain advantages and disadvantages. The first uh, advantage is that uh, the whole powertrain will be more simple. You don't need a, a variable transmission. You can have a fixed transmission, which will save you mechanical uh, parts and, uh, and which will drop the uh, thermal losses on the drivetrain. Neither we need a mechanical clutch. Uh, as far uh, in Europe, uh, people usually have a car with a manual transmission. You can omit it and you can omit the mechanical clutch also. So that's because the electric motor's uh, torque curve is shaped, uh, shaped uh, so that, so that uh, you don't need any free running. You can just start driving. And the motor is powered by a, a, a rechargeable battery. As you can see, here is an, an image of an electric passenger car. You have the battery. It's located uh, in uh, virtually all the commercial vehicles. The battery is located uh, on the bottom of the car. And uh, that's a certain advantage because uh, the car is uh, much more easier uh, to handle and drive uh, the lower the center of mass is in the car chassis. So it's a certain advantage that you can put the mass here and not uh, like if you compare it to a uh, regular uh, gasoline engine or diesel engine car, uh, the engine is here and it, it weighs, weighs a lot and uh, the center of mass is like here and that's not a good thing. Uh, better, it's much more better that we can put the center of mass uh, near the bottom of the car. Then we need, uh, we cannot just put the battery and uh, the electric motor, we need also the uh, inverter to drive the engine because all modern cars, they utilize a, a three-phase uh, alternating current uh, motor. So we need an inverter here. And also we have to take care of the battery and the engine and the power electronics thermal management. If you don't have any cooling here, the battery will deteriorate uh, much more rapidly, which it does uh, if you have the uh, proper thermal management. It's uh, like five or six years ago, in very warm countries, there was a, a debate about the uh, first generation Nissan Leaf electric cars. Uh, they, the battery, capacity was uh, falling very rapidly during the years because uh, uh, it was so hot like uh, if you had like 35 degrees like in Florida sometimes it is uh, the battery capacity uh, it will decrease much faster than it does in cold countries. Uh, Northern Europe it's uh, pretty ideal place for electric vehicles for the battery aging, because the battery will age much more faster if it's a very hot environment. Uh, that's about the hot environment, uh, but why are the electric vehicles such a hot topic? You cannot, uh, there is almost every day there, are, there is something in the news about electric uh, vehicles and electric cars. And uh, the main uh, driving reason for political pressure to uh, push electric uh, cars is uh, that, uh, well, if compared to the uh, like uh, period in uh, 
10 years ago or the last decade, uh, there was uh, people talking about uh, uh, climate change, but now uh, the climate change, uh, well, the people denying the climate change, they are so small, <laughs> so small number of people are denying the climate change and the uh, general public and politicians have accepted that if we don't um, do anything uh, to the CO2 emissions, uh, we are doomed, <laughs> to put it in short. And uh, to cut, uh, to stop the climate change or limit it, we have to cut uh, CO2 emissions. And uh, very large uh, proportion of the uh, CO2 emissions uh, in Europe, uh, they uh, do come from road traffic. And one way to cut down these emissions is to uh, use electric vehicles. And uh, some uh, electric vehicle enthusiasts say that uh, the, all the cars should be electric and uh, we should ban the gasoline engines and diesel engines, but uh, that's not so simple. Electric vehicles are one way and they are not the only one way to cut the CO2 emissions. Uh, we need also biofuels and uh, especially in the air traffic we need uh, biofuel uh, development and we have we might have L, uh, those um, hydrogen fuel cell cars in near future there is currently only one feasible uh, commercial product and it's it's very expensive Toyota Mirai but uh, Let's keep in mind that electric vehicles, they are one way to cut uh, electric, uh, those um, CO2 emissions from the uh, road traffic. Uh, why do we have this option? Uh, it's mainly due to the development of lithium battery technology. And the key driver behind that is the, that we have the lithium battery itself. Uh, it's almost uh, 30 years old invention. Uh, but the first lithium batteries were expensive, but now because the mobile devices like cell phones and laptops and uh, those uh, tablet computers, they are so common that everyone buys them and the capacity and mass production of lithium ion batteries has led to the fact that the uh, price has uh, fallen like 80% in eight years. Uh, you, if you wanted to buy lithium batteries, one uh, on year 2010, you had to buy like 100, uh, $1,000 $1, uh, for one kilowatt hour. But now the price is uh, somewhere between $100 and $200 uh, for the uh, mass market. Of course, if you go to a retail store and buy one cell of the battery, it's more expensive. But the, price uh, the car makers and uh, phone makers pay for the batteries, it's somewhere in between $100 and $200. It, they, are, they of course keep the exact price they pay, they keep it in secret, but uh, the market analysts uh, put it in that uh, gap. What are the advantages? Why we should uh, replace when possible, uh, the internal combustion engines with uh, battery electric vehicles. The best argument uh, of all, in my opinion, is the better total efficiency. We want to save energy because uh, the CO2 emissions, uh, they are, uh, well, if we spend less energy, we have much less CO2 emissions. And the better total efficiency from well to wheels, like if you uh, get the energy somewhere, you pump oil from ground or you mine coal or uh, do things like that, or you grow, uh, grow grain and make biofuel of it. Uh, when you then have the fuel and you burn it, uh, the internal combustion engine uh, wastes uh, the, almost all the energy you get from it. But with electric vehicles, uh, you can utilize over the half of that energy you have from that energy source. And, uh, well, uh, the car makers who market electric uh, cars, they say they, have, they are zero emissions or they have no emissions. That's actually not true. Uh, the electric vehicles, they have no local emissions. So there is no tailpipe, they won't pollute uh, the city air, 
but of course they have emissions. You have to uh, manufacture the car and you have to and you have to uh, make the electricity somewhere. Of course, if you use your own solar panels, it's almost emissionless uh, electricity, or if you have own wind farm, it's uh, almost emissionless, but the local emissions, they are zero. Uh, there are two uh, sources of emissions, which electric uh, vehicles do have uh, locally also. They make noise. Of course, the electric motor is virtually noiseless, but uh, when you drive like, uh, if you drive 50 kilometers per hour or faster, the tire noise, it's quite loud. So it surprises usually people who are their first time in their lives uh, in electric vehicle. Uh, they are surprised that, whoa, there is noise when you drive on the highway. Of course, there is the tires make noise and uh, you cannot do anything about it uh, with the, uh, or you cannot uh, cancel the noise uh, uh, with the electric uh, motor. And then there is particle emissions from, from tires and road when you drive, uh, the tires will emit rubber uh, small particles and from the road uh, it, will, uh, it will consume the road also. But uh, one advantage about the uh, local emissionless is that you can uh, better control when you make electricity in large plants, uh, the authorities have much better uh, chance to uh, supervise that they really uh, obey those limits uh, they have for the emissions. And it's also more, much more difficult to manipulate those emissions uh, from large power plants. Uh, if you uh, remember the, about, if we go two years backwards and uh, remember that diesel emission scandal, which was like, it was mainly uh, targeted uh, to car ma maker Volkswagen, but uh, well, uh, everyone knows that the real emissions uh, on real driving cycles are larger than in those uh, official tests. Then about uh, those uh, th technical reasons, uh, electric powertrain, it's almost service free. Of course, you have to change tires and uh, uh, change the uh, brake, brake fluid and uh, things like that. But you don't have to, for example, with the reg regular cars, you have to change the brake pads and brake discs uh, occasionally. But uh, with electric cars, because you can use uh, the electric motor also for uh, braking the car, the brake pads last, they, they do last uh, well over 100 kilometers, uh, 100,000 kilometers. Or, uh, well, if you, if you drive carefully, they might um, uh, durate like 200,000 kilometers also. But, well, the brake discs will last the lifetime of the vehicle and the brake uh, pads, uh, they, you maybe have to change them once on the lifetime of the vehicle. And then there is no oil changes and uh, things like that. Uh, the electric motor, uh, it does not break. The battery is only weak link in the electric vehicle. They are also, they are virtually uh, serviceless. Of course, you have to, uh, maybe there goes something broken and you have to fix it because it's a moving moving thing. You, there is also mechanical, always mechanical faults, but, but the electric drive, drive train, it's virtually uh, service free. Well, why don't we all drive with electric cars? The main disadvantage uh, of the th technology is that, well, you can fill up your, if you have diesel or gasoline car, you can fill it up like two or three minutes, uh, but you cannot fast charge your car. If you have electric car with a battery, it will take like 15 or 30 minutes. And the one problem uh, with those fast chargers is that you cannot, uh, charge it uh, with the same speed. Uh, when you charge the battery, you cannot uh, maintain the same charging speed uh, the whole time. Because for the reasons uh, from the battery electrochemistry, uh, you, when, you, you, when you first like uh, fill it up to 70% and it will take like uh, 25 minutes or, 
one half an hour. Uh, that will take like 25 minutes. If you want it uh, really full, you need like 100% or 95%, it will take another 25 minutes. So it's uh, not feasible to <laughs> have a one hour break on a service station on a long road trip. This is not a pro problem if you drive like uh, daily. For example, in Finland, the average daily uh, driving need for normal passenger cars, it's like 50 kilometers. That's uh, not a problem with any of the electric cars, even uh, the smallest ones. And the uh, most modern electric cars like Hyundai Kona or Tesla models, they will, uh, you can drive well over 300 kilometers with uh, one uh, charge of battery. That's not the problem. But if you have to drive like 600 kilometers, it's much more uh, a problem if you have to stop somewhere and uh, charge it somewhere. It will not, uh, it's not that easy to drive like 700 kilometers and visit your grandmother. And uh, one uh, problem which is uh, solving, but it's still a problem, is that the batteries are very expensive to manufacture. It's like a smallest, uh, if you go to a shop, uh, of course, this will vary, vary in European Union. In Finland, if you go to a, a car sales and uh, you want to buy a new car, so the cheapest ones, uh, a small car for four people or, or maybe five people, uh, the smallest car is like one, it's 10,000 euros in Finland. In some countries it's a bit cheaper because lower taxa taxation, but in Finland it's 10,000 euros. The cheapest electric car, it's uh, actually it's Volkswagen E-Up, a car for four persons. Uh, it will uh, cost 27,000 euros and you, you will get the 2,000 euro tax credit, it's still over twice that uh, price of a small uh, gasoline car. And that's because the manufacturing of the battery, it's very expensive. If you have 100 kilowatt hour battery, it will cost uh, to manufacture like a little over 10,000 euros. So it's like uh, if you have a car, electric car with a large battery pack, it will cost uh, the battery pack of the car costs the same as a small new car. The prices are falling, but uh, I think it's uh, like year 2025 when the smallest electric cars should be uh, in this uh, price level. That's an estimate of uh, the one, one research paper, paper I have read. And then there is the judging uh, thing. Uh, that's uh, usually more uh, of a self-fabricated problem. Uh, charging electric vehicles, it's usually not a problem. If you have electricity at your house, you can charge your electric vehicle. If you have a normal household socket for 10 amperes, uh, it will charge it with uh, 2.3 kilowatts. Uh, so you can, well, you can charge uh, almost all driving needs uh, overnight. Of course, if you drive a taxi, you have to buy a faster charger uh, point at your home, but uh, usually this is not a problem. This is more a bureaucratic problem if you live in an uh, apartment house and you ha don't have your own electric uh, uh, outlet uh, in, your, in your house, you have to uh, discuss with the uh, board of the house that uh, can you get a charging point. That's a problem, but that's, that, that's more political or uh, ad administration problem, not technical problem. Uh, for fast chargers, for passenger vehicles, they, the power they need, it's like uh, 50 kilowatts or 150 kilowatts. In future, they are making, in near future, like uh, next year, they are uh, planning to apply like 350 kilowatts. Actually, uh, for the electric buses, they already use this uh, kind of, uh, of charging power, 350 kilowatts. It, you can charge, if you have a bus with a large battery pack, you can charge it with this power. 
So if you have this uh, small 10 ampere socket, you can just, uh, uh, if you have it 10 hours overnight charging, you will get 100 or 150 kilometer of a new range uh, every night. So you ha don't, ha don't have to visit any fast chargers if you don't drive very long trips a day. Here is one example for passenger cars. Uh, if you have 400 kilometer trip, and a 64 kilowatt hour battery car. Uh, the car may, if you drive carefully in summer, you can maybe drive this uh, with uh, one charge. You don't have to stop anywhere. But uh, usually uh, in summer, you will get uh, like uh, 17 kilowatt hours uh, per 100 kilometers. So the range of the car is like uh, 376 kilometers. So you have to stop somewhere on the road to charge it. And if you make the stop like uh, after 300 kilometers of ride, and you put it on a fast charger with a 75 kilowatt of charging power, you will fill it enough, like 10 minutes, you just visit the restroom and take one cof cup of coffee and then you can uh, continue your trip. It's not a problem. Here is an illustration of the charging power. I think you cannot maybe see it on your screen, but the, uh, if the battery is almost empty, like 10% uh, or under 40 percent. Under 40 percent you will get the maximum charge power. It's 75 kilowatts. Then it will fall a little. The uh, more full the battery is, the more limited is the charging power. So if you want to wait that the battery is full, you have to wait like uh, another one half of an hour to get it uh, really full. It's not Wise. The only wise way is that you go to the fast charger and then charge it like uh, 15 or 20 minutes and then continue your trip and then uh, if you have a very long trip you will stop at the next charger and then charge it to the half and utilize this high charging power here. If you just wait to get it full you are just wasting your time. Uh, how do those uh, charging uh, cables look? Here is uh, two regular uh, slow charging cables. There are two types of the uh, sockets in the cars. Uh, this is type 1 and this is type uh, number 2. And uh, European Union is uh, pushing uh, these uh, sockets for new cars. So if you now buy an electric car, it should have this type 2 uh, socket inlet uh, in the uh, car. This is, uh, if you buy a used electric car, it might have this, this one. This is the most common one nowadays. And uh, here, is, here it is uh, how it looks uh, on the side of the car. This is from Tesla. Uh, they have uh, only this type 1 uh, inlet here, and you can even fast charge it uh, from this outlet. Uh, most uh, Euro European cars, and uh, it should be all the cars sold in the uh, Euro European Union, they should have this kind of uh, socket inlet. Here is uh, the two poles for the fast charging. You can charge them through uh, these inlets here. Uh, Asian cars uh, like uh, Nissan, they have this uh, another standard for fast charging. So if you uh, drop at the service station and uh, fast charge your car, you have to use this shadow mo inlet. It's, uh, well, it's uh, the bureaucratic reasons uh, for large automotive uh, manufacturers. They, they could not negotiate that uh, we have only one standard. So it's uh, the Asians use uh, this one and the European and um, the United States uh, use this uh, shadow mo. Oh, sorry, uh, the CCS. Uh, this socket here. But it's uh, changing. I hope that uh, we choose one of these. And it's not easy because uh, the both standards have their problems, but you can, uh, well, you can Google about them. It's like this is more unreliable uh, for the protocol, and this is more unreliable uh, for the connector. If you break one of these pins, you cannot judge. Well, about the efficiency, the 
uh, internal combustion engines, they, uh, of course, if you open a physics textbook, it reads that the efficiency of the gasoline or internal combustion engine, it's uh, uh, 30% or uh, maybe uh, on the diesel engine it might be even uh, close to 40%. But they are the values if you have the warm engine uh, in the laboratory uh, running on a fixed uh, speed and maximum load, then it's 30%. But uh, if you have just a normal uh, car and you drive it and uh, measure the efficiency, the efficiency is uh, like uh, from 12 uh, to 30 percent. 30 percent is a maximum view drive. With a high load uh, on, uh, on the highway, you can reach close to 30 percent uh, with a, a gasoline engine or diesel engine. Uh, electric vehicles, uh, they do have virtually at least double efficiency. So if the efficiency the energy which goes uh, from tank uh, uh, to the wheels, it's like 30% uh, at maximum. With electric vehicles, it's from 60 to 65%. It's at least double of one of that uh, gasoline engine. And uh, the electricity transmission, the losses, uh, they vary by country, but they are generally a couple of percents uh, or maximum like 5%. And, uh, much of the total efficiency of the electric uh, car, it depends uh, what kind of power plant uh, you have. Uh, those uh, simple uh, coal power plants, which just uh, burn coal or natural gas or whatever, uh, peat maybe, uh, and uh, if they just make electricity and uh, put the waste heat to the nearby river or uh, to a cooling tower, uh, then the efficiency is it's like 30%. But if you utilize the waste heat uh, to warming nearby houses, as in cities they usually do, or they heat up the uh, hot water to be used in households, the efficiency uh, it's like 90% or even more. So the total uh, environmentally uh, feasibility of the electric cars, it depends much, much of the fact that uh, how do you make the electricity. If you use renew, new, renewable uh, energy sources, uh, electric cars are environmentally friendly. The main factor is that the total efficiency uh, of electric car, it's uh, at least double to the gasoline cars uh, efficiency. So that's the main point. By using electric vehicles, you reduce the total energy consumption of the society. Here are a couple of uh, illustrations. We are running, uh, not yet, but uh, soon we are running out of time. So I will just, you can, you can find them. They are on the uh, United States uh, government's energy agency's uh, web page. You have very good illustrations about how the drivetrain losses vary with uh, electric vehicles and with that uh, gasoline engine uh, vehicles and hybrid vehicles also. So when you have electric car idling, the, you don't have any motor running. It, it, have, it has virtually uh, no uh, idling losses. The losses in charging, they are little over 10%. Uh, one uh, very uh, usual myth is that the electric vehicles, they don't work if it's cold, but uh, that's, that's not true. Uh, well, the cold weather, it's not a problem in, uh, like in Germany or in uh, Spain or any warmer countries uh, in the Southern Europe or Central Europe. Uh, mainly in uh, Finland, Sweden, Norway, Russia, it's uh, very cold at winter. It might be like minus uh, 40 degrees centigrade. Uh, the facts are that uh, cabin heating consumes energy from the battery. If you have to keep the cabin warm uh, unless you, well, no, no driver 
wants to uh, freeze in their car, so you have to uh, warm up the cabin. And it's also for the safety. If you don't warm the cabin up, uh, then you will get frost or mist in the windows, and it's dangerous. You have to warm it up, and it will consume energy from the battery. Uh, all friction and that kind of uh, losses increase in cold. Uh, the freezing air, it's uh, more thick than uh, warm air, so the air drag increases in cold. Battery losses increase in cold, uh, but the electric motor and power electronics, they have no uh, problems, even in like minus 40 degrees. They work great. Electric motor, there is no... Uh, there is, well, in gasoline engine cars you have liters, many liters of uh, oil which gets thick it's, if it's very cold and that's, that might cause some problems. Uh, some cars uh, have uh, problems uh, with those, uh, uh, the lubrication system so that if the one pipe freezes in the engine it will uh, blow up their oils, <laughs> oils uh, and uh, then you, well, then you cannot drive. And if your daily driving needs are like 100 or 200 kilometers, you can uh, drive them even in winter with an electric car. The problem is that if you have like uh, 400 kilometers uh, to your summer cottage, which you have or want to visit also in winter, then you uh, will have problems because uh, in like minus, th minus 30 centigrade, if you compare that uh, to summer temperatures, the range, which is at summer 400 kilometers for an electric car, uh, it might uh, drop to 200 kilometers. There might be 50. If, even if you use preheating and that kind of techniques, uh, the range will drop. And uh, it's because of these three facts. You cannot, you cannot uh, bypass the laws of physics uh, even if you have an electric car. Other thing which concerns people uh, using electric cars is that uh, how many years do the batteries last? Well, we have to compare it uh, to the gasoline uh, car uh, life cycles. Uh, the, if you now buy a gasoline car, it's designed so that uh, it will last like 250,000 kilometers. And uh, the modern lithium batteries, they can last virtually the same. So it's, uh, of course, uh, always everyone has a friend who has an old Mercedes Benz, which uh, he or she has driven like 600,000 kilometers, but they don't mention that they have changed the engine one time and then uh, that's only one occasion. There are plenty of same cars which have broken before that kind of uh, kilometer. Uh, meter readings. And uh, modern lithium batteries, they durate like 1000 uh, cycles, full cycles. If you uh, run them empty and then recharge them full, they will uh, last like 1000 full cycles. But uh, in electric vehicles, usually, first, you don't have to run them empty and then fill them up. And uh, that's one fact. And even the cars, they don't allow you to drive it really empty. So the, when the car tells you that you have a 0% uh, battery left, uh, there is still like 10 or 15%, usually usually 10, 10 is a good uh, value, 10% of the actual capacity left. And with this kind of use, you usually drive like uh, 100 or 150 kilometers a day. With this kind of uh, discharge cycle, the cycle life is like 3,000 or 4,000 cycles, which will mean like over 10 years or maybe 15 years uh, of uh, life. But the number of uh, charge and discharge cycles is not the problem. The main problem is that uh, even if you don't drive or maybe drive once in a week, you, let's say uh, like uh, old guy buys an electric car and visits a uh, uh, shop one time a week with that, uh, the battery is dead after 15 years because 
the calendar aging is the dominant factor in the traction battery aging. It's not the kilometers or cycles. It's that uh, if you have like a, if you have 20 year old lithium battery, it will be almost dead. It does not break down, but the range will diminish. It's like uh, if you have a, a 10 or 15 years old battery, the capacity of the battery has uh, fallen like 20 or 30 percent. In cold countries, the batteries uh, last like uh, from 10 to 15 years, and in uh, warmer countries like uh, Italy or uh, southern Spain, uh, the value is from 8 to 13 years. So the hot weather will speed up the chemical reactions which uh, deteriorate the battery. They will deteriorate much more faster. Uh, then people usually uh, talk about the safety. Well, uh, the electric car batteries, uh, they are manufactured uh, with a very strict uh, quality, st quality standards. And to put this in short, uh, if you just uh, crash in a city, like uh, someone uh, hits your car with his or her own car, and uh, hits your car, uh, it will not start the battery fire. Uh, to get your vehicle battery burning, you have to like uh, run 100 kilometers uh, to a concrete wall, and you will you will die <laughs> from the crash and not f uh, of the battery fire. So uh, if you if your battery catches fire, you are already dead with that crash. It, it's um, sad to talk about these things, but uh, that's, uh, that's a fact. And uh, when battery burns, uh, it will burn like uh, you burn wood in your uh, stove. It, it does not explode, it burns. And it burns much more nicely than, uh, for example, gasoline. If you have 50 liters of gasoline uh, in your car, it's much more dangerous than the battery. And uh, one thing which is under research uh, currently is that uh, some uh, chemicals which uh, leave the battery when it burns, uh, they are quite uh, poisonous. Uh, hydrogen, hydrogen fluoride is the worst one. If uh, a lithium battery burns in certain temperature, certain environment, it will uh, emit uh, hydrogen fluoride. Uh, so if you uh, inhale those gases, they, are, they might be even lethal. But uh, there are currently no uh, uh, incidents which have, uh, for example, if someone has died of, the, of those fumes, they, there are no, no cases of that. So the risk is very small. You don't have to worry about it. If the car uh, burns in somewhere, uh, the gases will fly away and uh, won't kill anyone. It's about the uh, percentage uh, in the air which make it poisonous. Uh, electric shock hazard, this uh, actually, also these myths uh, and belief of them, uh, it var varies uh, uh, from country to country. I heard that uh, in uh, UK, uh, some people think that you cannot, if it's raining, you cannot uh, drive with electric car. Uh, in Finland, uh, I, have, I haven't heard that rumor, but uh, in, in UK, some people uh, believe this. I think it's, uh, uh, well, one, one thing people think is, well, if you have uh, water and electricity, they are bad combination, but uh, with electric cars, that's not a problem. You can even judge them when it's raining. So the uh, connectors are very well insulated. Uh, the water, even, even if you drive, drive in a steep pool of uh, uh, water on the road, it will cause no problems with the electric cars. And you don't have any electric shock hazard because the Battery uh, has also, the, well, the dangerous voltage, uh, like 400 volts, it's inside the battery, and there is no way uh, for you to uh, get a touch of it. You cannot touch, uh, touch the battery. Even if you crash, there is no way that the voltage uh, will cause a current through you. It's impossible. Some words about uh, biofuels and uh, other uh, alternative power sources. Electric cars, as you know, they are very expensive. Uh, to reduce emissions from, uh, uh, for the 
present cars, uh, the fastest way is to use biofuels. And uh, if you made, make them from the waste liquid, like from the paper industry or food industry, uh, they are very ecological. And uh, when you, if you grow something, if you grow grain or potatoes or uh, whatever palms uh, to uh, make uh, uh, biofuels, uh, the matter is a bit more complicated because, uh, well, the best way is just uh, not grow anything and harvest it because it will also uh, make emissions when you when you grow something and uh, fertilize it and then collect it it will uh, use energy too one thing with these alternative uh, power sources one good thing is that uh, to convert a conventional car to use uh, bioethanol it costs like four, 400 euros and uh, if you want it to run with biogas, compressed biogas, methane, it will cost like a, a like two or three thousand euros. It's cheaper than buying an electric car. One uh, technology which is under debate is uh, the hydrogen fuel cell. Uh, it's like a, well, uh, the fuel cell will output a DC. Uh, electric power, you can you can replace uh, the large battery pack with a fuel cell and a hydrogen tank. And uh, the main advantage of this uh, system is that uh, it will it's very very fast to refill. It will take like a couple of minutes. If you compare it with fast charge, it's much more much more uh, slower. But uh, there is a still efficiency problem. The uh, current fuel cells, they have efficiency of about 50% or uh, at uh, the best reading is like 60, 60%, but 50 is a good estimate. They might be uh, feasible for long range drive. If you, if you need to drive 700 kilometers a day, you might buy a fuel cell car in near future. And the heavy transport, which is not feasible for the, because uh, those large, uh, like uh, large trucks, use uh, over ten times of the diesel fuel a small passenger cars uses. You cannot simply put the batteries with current te technology to them. With uh, buses, the thing is different. If you have a city bus, which will drive like a 10 kilometer route, it will take one half an hour and then the driver will have a short break. Uh, you can very well uh, put the battery pack, battery pack in a bus and then drive uh, it empty and then uh, you can fast charge it and the driver is on the brake and then he or she can drive the same route again. So in uh, heavy passenger tra transit with buses, especially in cities, Electric, electricity is the best uh, power source, in my opinion, because uh, all the, if you think the emissions and the noise uh, which uh, ca comes from the conventional, conventional buses, it's a very large problem in cities. Electric buses make virtually no noise, uh, at least when they leave from the stop. It will help, help them a lot. Well, uh, I have still one minute. <laughs> uh, are electric cars uh, really environmentally friendly? Uh, well, always when we uh, transport people or goods uh, from one place to another, it will cause emissions. You cannot uh, escape the laws of physics. It will need energy and uh, making energy uh, or getting it somewhere uh, will uh, have uh, emissions. Uh, manufacturing the traction battery, it will need uh, much energy and uh, much of the ecological footprint of the electric car depends uh, which kind of uh, electricity you have for the battery battery manufacturing if you use uh, hydroelectric power the total uh, environmental cost of manufacturing the battery will fall drastically uh, there are plenty of research made of this, this Area, but one rule of uh, thumb is that after you have driven 60,000 kilometers with your car, it has compensated the extra uh, 
energy which it needs uh, compared to a conventional car uh, to uh, manufacture it will then it's compensated and after that when you drive uh, with a common electricity sources uh, it will save environment okay uh, to summarize before your questions uh, the electric vehicles, uh, they have almost zero local emissions. Of course, they have noise uh, from the tires and uh, particles from the tires, but uh, the CO2 local emissions are zero. And if you uh, choose to use uh, those uh, renewable energy sources for electricity, uh, the total CO2 emissions are also very close to zero. Electric vehicles, they don't have uh, so much moving parts and the engine, uh, sorry, motor is uh, virtually service free. And the only thing which uh, is the weak link in the electric car is the battery. You have to maybe change it after 10 or 12 years. But uh, when we get uh, cheaper batteries, uh, we, uh, I think uh, in, 15, in 15 years, all the new passenger cars are electric. Okay, thank you. Now, if you have any questions, please ask, and uh, I will, uh, maybe you will read if, if there are any questions. Exactly. Thanks very much. Uh, I have one uh, question. How does wireless charging work? And is that feasible? Could you say something about that? Okay, wireless charging. Uh, wireless charging is, uh, uh, well, uh, all of uh, us maybe uh, have used wireless charging uh, with, if you have an electric tooth toothbrush, they have usually wireless charging, uh, which is based, there is a, uh, a coil inside the charger and there is another coil uh, in the toothbrush and, you, and uh, the, man the electric uh, power uh, will travel via magnetic field uh, to the toothbrush uh, battery. Uh, for cars, there are several uh, problems because the power levels needed you with a toothbrush you need like one or two watts uh, in uh, overnight uh, but uh, if you want to charge your car uh, the power is uh, many kilowatts so the order of magnitude of the power it's uh, thousand more than thousand times uh, compared to a toothbrush and the air gap uh, to the power to uh, travel efficiently and to diminish the EMC, uh, well, if when we transfer energy uh, via magnetic field, it will cause, not, not all the energy goes to the car, it will also radiate it um, to the nearby electric devices, and that might cause uh, some disturbance uh, to other devices. Uh, so the wireless charging, it's a good idea, but it's like, uh, how can people use them because the air gap between the car and the charger, uh, it can be a maximum of a couple of millimeters to work, uh, work feasibly. And uh, now maybe when we have robot uh, buses or robot taxis, they can uh, travel and uh, go near the charging uh, to a wireless charger. But uh, if we think that human beings drive those and you have to uh, drive uh, like one millimeter or two millimeters away that judger, I think people will hit them and that <laughs> will cause <laughs> uh, problems. But uh, I think uh, wireless charging, they are, devel they are in constant development. Maybe we have uh, in five years uh, places where you can drive to a parking lot and then there is uh, under the uh, place you go and park your car, there is a wireless charger which uh, lifts up and touches your uh, car's uh, uh, chassis and uh, it will charge it. But though all those uh, things with moving parts, they cost and they may break. So I think uh, are people ready to pay for that thing that uh, you don't have to just grab the wire and put it in your car? Uh, it's well, the markets will decide that. I, I think uh, wireless charging, it's interesting, but uh, maybe, well, you have seen that uh, with the cell phones, uh, they have that option, but uh, only few people use them. But that's a good question, and I might be wrong. Maybe in 10 years we do have wireless charging, 
uh, and it's used in the cars. But we have, have had it in cell phones like five years and I have seen only, I have tried it a couple of times, but I still use the wire. So maybe sooner for public transport than for cars, maybe that's usually yes. what's happened, yeah. I have another uh, question Great. that came in. Uh, so how much would uh, the cost of a, of a BEV diminish with a smaller battery? Okay, now the cheapest uh, electric cars uh, are like uh, 27,000 euros uh, in Finland. Uh, the same model with uh, same model with uh, uh, gasoline engine uh, costs like uh, 15,000 euros. So uh, I think uh, in about five or six years the prices uh, are the same for small cars or maybe like uh, the car is like uh, the gasoline car is 15,000 and the electric car is 17,000. 17, so it's uh, it will happen in five years and the prices are coming down uh, constantly so if you are now thinking that uh, I might be changing car uh, and uh, I'm waiting maybe uh, to electric cars to get better. Uh, if you can still wait uh, two years, uh, I recommend you wait it and then you can buy much more better electric cars after two years than if you bought it now. So I have said to all my friends who have been thinking that should they buy an electric car, I have been saying that wait one or two years and uh, then change your car, you will get much more better electric car. No, thank you. Great, thank how about, you. Um, how about, because um, the fabulous project is about uh, also demand responsive uh, yes. transport, public transport. Uh, how do you see uh, the developments with batteries affecting that, that it's on demand and sometimes they're standing still for a long time and then they're driving constantly and it's a fleet of electric small buses, buses these shuttle buses. Yes. Do you see any challenges there? Uh, I think uh, the main, main challenge is that to make those uh, buses or uh, small taxis to be autonomous because uh, the, uh, with current battery technology, uh, if the uh, cars or buses are traveling uh, in a city, the distances are so short that uh, the modern uh, current battery technology, it's, uh, it's already enough for them also. Uh, because uh, when they don't have passengers, they can drive themselves to the charging point. So in city transport, the battery technology, it's, it's not a problem. And uh, if you consider that uh, the uh, calendar aging is the main problem in the passenger car batteries, those uh, public transport uh, vehicles, they drive, they, well, they drive like 12 hours or more on a day. Passenger car, it's driven like under one hour per day. So it's very good if you just uh, run them, it's much, the much more hours a day it's running, the much more cheaper it is. Very cost efficient. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I don't think we have any more questions at the moment, unless if there's anyone who we still, have still one minute. <laughs> want to ask something, then please uh, unmute yourself or type it in the chat box. But if not, then uh, I'll come come here, stand next to you. Great. Maybe you put Thank if you, you put your next slides, then people can still see your Great. email I will, address yes. as well. I will gladly answer if you have any additional questions or need sources to uh, some things I have said, please send me email vsa.linjaaho at metropolia.fi. I will leave this slide here. Maybe you can take a screenshot of it and, uh, and send me email. I will gladly answer. Expect a couple of days delay for reply. I have currently like 100, 100 emails this week. <laughs> but Thanks very much. Thank for you your, very much uh, for, for your, your attention. Webinar. Thank you for your attention. Thanks everyone for joining. And uh, the next webinar will be held on the 16th of April. Uh, you can register through the fabulous.eu website. Um, and this will be on the topic of um, regulations and legal aspects and uh, operational design domains, etc. So that Great. will surely be also interesting. Um, today we had an interesting afternoon, so thanks very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, uh, goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.